In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a very basic equipment system that uses gameplay abilities, modular game features, and the enhanced input system. The main goal of this video is to kind of show you how these three things interact with each other. Because uh, I know there's very little examples and documentation of these things online, much less how they interact with each other. So yeah, I hope you find this useful. Before we start, however, I just want to highlight some of the prerequisites for this project. Um, you'll want an existing interactable object system. You'll want the game playability system set up. Um, this includes installing all the required plugins, um, doing all of like the code setup, and yeah, pretty much everything I covered in videos one and two of this series. And you'll also want to set up enhanced input by installing the plugin and adding the game feature actions that you'll need, specifically the one that adds input context, I think it was. Um, so yeah, I'll leave links to my videos down below and those should help you get caught up if you're not already. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is create our new plugin. So let's call this equipment and go ahead and create it. We just want to set everything to loaded by default and add a dependency to our interactable objects plugin that we made in the previous video, if you're following along. So the first thing we need to do is create um, a new input action and input mapping context because when we pick up say a sword we want to be able to tell the player hey when you hit the left button use the sword's primary ability okay so let's just make one called primary and secondary sure and we'll create a new input mapping context as well and we'll call this equipment we open this up, we'll want to add a primary and secondary. Bind secondary to right mouse, primary to left mouse, save. And if we go back to our plugin, let's just add this new input mapping to our player. Cool. All right, now that we have input set up, we can go ahead and create a new blueprint class and it's going to extend our BP interactable object behavior component because this class is going to represent objects in the world that can be picked up and quote unquote equipped. All right, so let's call this equipable item behavior and open it up. So right off the bat, we know that when we pick up an item, we want to equip its abilities and effects, right? So to do that, we need an ability map, and it's going to map input actions to ability gameplay abilities. And note that it's going to be a class reference, just makes things easier to. Um, yeah, to give abilities to our players. Before we can bind the abilities to our input actions, however, we need to add one class, or sorry, one component to our player class. And it's gonna be called ability input binding. All right, now if we go back to our equipable item behavior, you'll see I added a new function called give player abilities. Let's take a look at what it does. As you can see, we just get the player character, then we loop through all of the abilities in the map we created. We're gonna give the player each ability in this map, and then we're also gonna set the input binding to, you know, um, to the input action based on you know the entry of the map, as well as the uh, the new ability that was just given. So now. What this is basically doing is just giving each ability to the player in this map here and actually setting the key binding to the input action that we set here. Now, food for thought, if you want this to be a little more flexible and not just work with the player, you would potentially you know, modify this a little bit and, or even maybe modify 
the interactable object behavior, or sorry, the interactable object interface to actually have a reference to the object that tried interacting with it. And then you get, uh, you know, the ability input binding that way. I'm just trying to do things as like stripped down and simple as possible so that you can apply this to whatever project you might be working on. So to test this out, we'll go back to our project here, uh, our plugin, sorry, and create a new component. We'll call this, sorry, it's going to extend the equipable item behavior that we just uh, created here. And we'll call this cube equipment. So this might represent an actual piece of equipment in your world. And if we open it up here, all we have to do is modify the ability map to include what we want. Um, so let's just go ahead and create a new ability as well, just to test. Gameplay ability. We'll call this Q primary. And it's just going to print cube primary. <laughs> and then we'll end the ability so we can reuse it. And now if we go back to our map here, we can you know, map the primary to that ability. And finally, <laughs> we can go back to our base content. We created a folder in the previous video to hold all of our game feature objects. We'll create one for equipable objects. And this will be an actor equipable cube. It's just gonna be cube. And maybe we will make this shoot. That's fine. All right. And now in the equipment plugin here, we need to add another action. It's going to add components specifically. We'll add the BP cube equipment component to the BP equipable cube. I think we called it. Yep, equipable cube. All right. All right, so if we go back to the world, drag the cube in here and edit the level blueprint to load and deactivate the game feature plugin here make sure that it's activating correctly and hit play you'll see that i'm hitting left click but nothing's happening why is that well i spent days investigating this issue and found out that it was a bug with unreal engine Anyway, it doesn't matter. What we want to do is convert this function to an event. And, oh man, it's got all screwed up. But we want to add a delay node of duration zero seconds. Like I said, very bizarre. But doing this actually fixes the issue. So we hit play. I'm going to interact with the cube, left click. And you can see in the top left corner, the ability is firing. So yeah, thanks, Unreal. <laughs> this, uh, this little thing took me days. This was meant to be a very basic example of the things that you can do with the enhanced input, gameplay ability system, and game feature plugins. So if you want to take your equipment system to the next level, here are some of the things that I would suggest and how I would go about implementing them. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment what you want to see next.